What's up, everyone? Welcome to Where Does Food, the food history podcast that talks about, well, you know, the history of food. I'm Elle. And I'm your host, Tim. What's up, everybody? And what today... That's how I did it every time. Please, well, I mean, energy's up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm your host, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Energy will drop here. No, no. Cut that. No. Cut that last one. <laughs> <laughs> I am Tim. Um, and today we're talking about food that is near and dear to my heart. I think your heart as well, as well, as well, as well, as well. Tim, we're talking about tacos today. Taco Tuesday. It's not Tuesday, but Taco, Taco Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Taco Monday when you hear this, because you know what? It's taco time always. Yeah, it's Check always Check that taco watch. Time. It's taco time. Yeah. Um. So how do you feel about tacos, Tim? I do. Oh, my God. I love tacos so much. Taco. I love tacos. I'm a taco fanatic. I eat tacos all the time. If I could <laughs> bathe in tacos, I would. Can I brag on you for a second? Brag on me? Okay, sure. You make some good tacos. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm... I'm from Texas, and I take it seriously. Hell yeah. You're a taco. great representative. Yeah, I take taco making very seriously. So listen, so as of 2020, there are 7,427 Taco Bells in the world. Okay, damn. It spans 31 countries and have consistently expanded every year since 2010. Okay. So with that being said, out, out of 7,427 Taco Bells, what do you rate tacos? 7,427? Yeah. 7,300. All right. So we've got a lot of, not we that ha- much. We, got we room really to grow, don't have that much but room like, to grow. <laughs> I got to sell this next 127, though. Yeah. Yeah. All you right. know how I keep saying I'm going to be like harsh? Yeah. I just like food too much, man. Absolutely. I mean, I can't, I can't, I'm be, listen, listener. Yeah, I'm listening. Listener and L. I cannot be harsh to tacos. They are too good. There is no reason for me to just like lowball it for the I sake agree. of me trying to. No. Be like edgy. harsh and edgy. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Tacos Go are, with what you know. Tacos are almost a perfect food. <laughs> yeah, they are. So we could get another perfect food today. I'm just going to say that outright. I would be surprised if we didn't. But I'm yeah. pumped. All right, let's fucking do this. Man. Hey, guys. Welcome to the ad section. I'm here to tell you real quick about Anchor by Spotify. You may have heard us talk about Anchor at the end of our episodes is because Anchor is the platform we use to distribute our podcasts. It's totally free. It helps us distribute our podcasts to different platforms. That's how we're on Apple Podcasts. That's how we're on Google Podcasts, CastBox, you name it. They've helped us do that. You can record directly on the app, on the webpage. They don't even need a super fancy setup. It's super straightforward totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on your podcast or whatever you like to do. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the episode. Just like middle school, man, it's taco time. Taco time. Taco time. It's going on the cafeteria. So like a lot of our older foods, the origin of the tacos, it's not exactly clear. Super surprising. What? I know. You're telling me meat shoved in a tortilla is not a clear timeline? No. Who would have thought? Ridiculous. Best thing I got for you, though, is location location mexico south america okay so that's where we've got um an ideally timeline before the spanish invaded i honestly i legitimately thought you were gonna be like but i have a location rome (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna be like no no for once yeah no 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 no, no, no. if i recall we're not going to rome (laughs) we're not going to rome this time which is again surprisingly for old foods because tacos are pretty old yeah, they, if it's before the Spanish invasion, it seems pretty fucking They're old. They're pretty fucking old, man. Yeah. But mm, bam. before we get into it, though, let's talk about what a taco is in case yeah. you don't know what a taco is. Yeah, so, maybe you don't. Maybe you're... Which is fine. Maybe you're from... Maybe you've just always had burritos your entire life. Yeah, maybe you're from, like, the UK, and you don't know... <laughs> I'm kidding. Baines. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm Fish kidding. and chips. That's all I make, right? Fish yeah. and chips. So I'm here to tell you that tacos, they're traditionally made. So that's corn. Yeah. Corn. So it's corn tortillas. Um, usually small in size. So literally think about the, about the size of your hand. Yeah. Ish, I would say. My hand's kind of small. So You're, a little bit yeah. on my hand. Are you looking about like four to five inches? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Okay. So then, um, anywho, and they usually have a filling in there, usually a meat of some sort, but it can also be beans. Beans. Maybe even some cheese too, just as, and then a little eggs. bit of garnish on top. It, you say eggs? Eggs or Okay. Taco. I just want to make sure. I was like, yeah. you said pegs, and I was like, I've actually never heard of that. What is that? Pegs. Eggs. I like eggs. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> A student episode on Excel. Okay, I'm <laughs> actually totally down. Right no. Okay, so actually, <laughs> welcome no first research. Sin. We don't research chicken or egg. Chicken or egg. Uh, do do do. Egg. 
Well, hatch the egg. How'd the egg come about? Uh, uh, probably like you know a cross cross genetics from two other. Chicken okay, so the word animals. taco comes from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's move back to tacos. The word taco comes from the. I'm so sorry. I'm probably gonna butcher this. The Nahuatl word for talaco, which means half or in the middle. Oh shit! Which is refers really to the way it was formed. Yes, right. I love sense? that so much. Yeah, that's very fun. Um, so. Very interestingly enough, the taco has been named as an intang- intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO. UNESCO, it's the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. It's Holy United shit. Nations was like, the taco is an important historical yeah, and has impacted humanity in ways that are so positive, we have to make note of it. Yeah, well, I agree. I love it. Me too. I don't. I don't disagree with that take at all. I think that was the perfect move to go. Um, and for I would say obvious reasons, it's one of the symbols of Mexican food. Yeah. Yeah. Just hands down. Hands down. You say taco. That's usually where my brain goes to. But I want to talk about the other part of this tortillas for a second. The mm. actual tortilla part, right? So they have their origins in Mesoamerica. Um, so when I say Mesoamerica, think Southern North America and most of Central America. All so we're right. kind of in that area. Yes. Yeah, so probably Texas and down. Texas. Texas. Um, old Tejas. Tejas, North, North Mexico. New Mexico. Oh my God. New Mexico. Sorry. North, North she Mexico. She called Texas North Mexico. North Mexico. <laughs> Tejas. Yeah. North Mexico. I mean, I'm going to be <laughs> this person really fast for all you Texas people. Sorry, Tim. Oh, okay. That yeah. have told me that. Fuck Tennessee. If it wasn't for us and David Crockett, you'd still be using pesos. Anyways, so. Good. I think we should have <laughs> continued to use pesos. Davey. <laughs> Davey Crockett. I shouldn't be a Texan. I should be a Mexican. A That's Mexican. fact of life, you know? Um. So the tortillas date back to 500 BCE. So like a long fucking time. We've been tortilling yeah. it up for a f- minute. Before the common era, baby. Yep. So then you have the corn tortilla. Um, again, as we're talking about, it's made from that maize, the masa de maize. It's the oldest variety of a tortilla. Good old masa, baby. Good old masa, baby. So towards the end of the 19th century, the first mechanical utensils for making tortillas, called the tortilla press, um, tortilleras or tortilladoras, were invented and manufactured in Mexico. Oh, sick. I so 19th tortilla century. press. Uh, buddy, you're fucking on it. Yeah. yeah. So about 19th century is when that came about. Cool. And then they made my life easier. <laughs> we love it. No, we yeah. absolutely love it. And then we have the wheat tortilla. Right, right. And that more so has European origins. The flour tortilla. Absolutely. So it yeah. has got the fat, oil, of or course. lard. Of course it does. Right. Yeah. Salt. Um, and then there's baking powder usually in there as well. It's usually ident- we prepare it's like identical to corn tortillas, but Yeah, I mean, do you have the recipe for corn tortillas, like the masa? Tortillas? I mean, because I can tell you off my top of my head right now. I, if you didn't have it off down. the dome, tell us, Tim. Yeah, so it's essentially masa, uh, water, lard, and salt. Mm, that's it. That's it. That's all you do. Pretty simple. That's it. You put them together and you press them down. <laughs> that's so good. That's it. And Can't then you fucking and you hit it up. Uh, and 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 traditionally, it 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 depends. Like lard is very traditional, mm-hmm. but animal fats are pretty traditional mm-hmm. too, which makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely. Uh, something that isn't traditional is like oil. Utter. Like using oil, oil isn't necessarily tra- like lard is traditional. I even go with butter would even be kind of weird when you yeah. have lard. Like you said, the lard yeah. and the animal fats because it goes with what was available to them. Yeah. So that's I a very that. traditional yeah. traditional thing. So to your point of what you're talking about, these wheat bur- these wheat tortillas, they're us- that's what you normally see in like burritos. Yeah. Right. And fajitas. Like again, not norm you don't normally see these wheat tortillas mm-hmm. when you're having a taco. Yeah. And so with that being said, when we talk about tacos in the podcast today, it's we're talking about the corn. Yeah, we're, the talking, about good, yeah, we're talking about, about those tortillas. Tacos. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. So yeah. just for reference, not not the big fatty ones. Yeah, I don't, small, I don't know where you're going ones. with this, but I'm excited to like get to America because fucking oh. A, we did a weird thing with that hard oh, shell yeah. shit, didn't we? Oh, Tim, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. We, will, we will get to America here in a little bit and cool. how we... Yeah. How... Yes, we, we will yeah, talk about it's it. It's very funny you mentioned that like flour is meant for like other things. Uh-huh. And I'm just sitting here thinking of like, ooh, yeah, soft oh, yeah, tacos we... get ordered all the time. And it's even fun. Not to cut you off. I'll let you no, keep No, Tim, go. You're good. But it's it's very funny when I talk to people that um, maybe don't love tacos as much as I do. 
uh, prefer <laughs> flour tortillas for their mm. tacos. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty common here in America. Absolutely. I find that very interesting because it's, it's just, it's because it's just yeah. wild to me. I'm just like, no, buddy. It's the double corn tortilla. You know what I mean? You know what, though? Can I say that's it wasn't really till more recently that I was like, wait, tacos come in a, the corn tortilla. Yeah. Because more more likely than not, I'm more likely being served just the flour tortillas. That's so interesting to it's, me. Yeah. I mean, obviously, but, I grew up in like I like I would say like soft taco or or uh, hard shell taco before, but like I started to. I mean, I, I was the benefit of growing up in Texas, though. You know, you get your hands on like legitimate tacos. And I'm really trying to. I almost. Um, well, you know, you can make like homemade tacos. It's like if you get the flour tortillas you can also make burritos from that mm -hmm. but it's like that's such a now because i'm like i have mm -hmm. i have corn that's i mean i just have corn tortillas yeah i don't really well, make, I, I don't really make burritos like that anymore yeah it's funny when i was growing up for a long time as a kid like you know when you're a kid you don't know where food comes from right so like your <laughs> yeah. interaction with whatever food it is you just believe that's what it is all absolutely the time. absolutely um i totally believe that corn tortillas only came as hard shells no, I think that's fair. Yeah. I only, I, I only really till recently when I was honestly doing research for this podcast that I realized that hard shell tortilla shells were something of very new when you talk about yeah. the, yeah. the talk. Yeah. It's Wild. Yeah, and again, it's, it's like, an Americanized yeah, as well. Yeah. like the shape mm -hmm. of it. Like tostadas are a thing, but yeah. like it's. Yeah. No, that continue. shit's wild to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, this is kind of segueing us because we're talking about of course like everything there's just oh glad to, i can derail right, us in the right direction no, no, no. <laughs> dude every time come on we're professionals here no these we've got these suedo origin stories about tacos themselves and how they came about so we've got multiple theories as mentioned earlier we've all can kind of agree on that tacos were in mexico before the spanish arrived don't exactly know when but we know for sure that the spaniards had nothing to do with the creation of the taco and what we know the taco is no you don't say. Yeah. So well, early origins of the taco, they'd warm up the soft flat corn tortillas and then they'd fill them with cooked organs or fish. Makes sense. Right. I mean, what else are you going to fill tacos with? Organs yeah. of animals, by the way. I'm hopefully assuming. I didn't read anything about cannibalism, so I'm making a grand assumption that it was, it was probably animals. Not. It was probably not cannibalism. <laughs> I just want to clarify that. <laughs> no army hammer shit in this. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, and so then this was fun because now we're, we are kind of coming up to North America for this one. So the essence of the modern taco originated from Mexican silver miners. Mm. Um, so the taco de Monero. Um, and these, <laughs> this is fun. These miners would wrap some gunpowder in pieces of paper in order to blow the walls out of the mines. And this is actually how they got ore. So they were just literally like U shaped stuffing that bad boy in there and blowing the fuck out of walls. This shape is actually what has inspired taquitos. Because oh. if you look at taquitos, they look they look like sticks of dynamite. Yeah. So that's kind of where that... That's awesome. Right? Very fun. Yeah. Taquitos um, are fucking... I love taquitos, man. Delicious. <laughs> Mexican cuisine in general is just so immaculate, good. dude. I yeah. fucking hate how good it is. It's so good. It makes me angry. I could probably eat it, it all the time. All the time. All I the could. time. Yeah. Be not tired of it. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never in my life. So from this point, we have, again, like, we talked about it. Like, when food's good, it's usually going to spread through the working class. And that's when you know. Yeah. That's when you know you've got a hit. So it's spreading through the working class of Mexico. And there's taquiros popping up. I always spell that wrong. I say that word wrong. Um, popping up over around mexico so it's offering those moderately priced meals so people can actually go in and have these foods it's not just being um specifically for these elites and aristocrats that can only afford these foods that we've seen it's just like yeah hey dude like it's you just got off of work let's go get some tacos bro it's fucking taco yeah um and then also it's very interesting migrant women um from all over mexico like the sub consider the countryside and the suburbs of it um they came to mexico city to sell these tacos um, and that quickly transformed the city in becoming just this massive taco hub, essentially, which is so right. fun. Yeah. Um, and these ladies, they're specifically known as chili queens. And yes, we'll talk about them um, here in a little bit. But I love that. There's some lore involved with yeah. tacos and, and how yeah. Mexico City just became the... You grew up in Texas. There's a few, 
you know, unofficial chili queens that I love end that. Up, oh my gosh! Okay, end up bringing incredible Mexican food. To, I bet no you know, to school luncheons, just things Fuck like that. Yeah. Selling like one dollar, you know, breakfast. Tacos that makes me and so happy. At the top of the day. I mean, fucking awesome. That makes awesome. me so happy. I don't happy, know if dude. anyone else had that experience in in their school, but all no. the time. Yeah, all the time. Tamales being sold. Shut up. Um, yeah, all the time. Dude. Oh, I'm so jealous. And we just have people. Yeah, I mean, we had a a huge. Uh, uh, obviously, in Texas, we have a huge Mexican population. Right. Huge Latin population. Right. Um. And yeah, all the time. Oh, I love that all for you. Man, yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah, it's great. That's fucking. And incredible. they all, yeah, of course. I mean, of course, their their families just, yeah, that's their cuisine, man. They Fuck know yeah, how to cook right, it. exactly. That's just like their day to day. Yeah, man, they know how to make I'm it. Jealousy, it's dude. good as shit. It's good as <laughs> Very shit. Very jealous. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, so the origins of tacos again, they're based around corn. So sometime around three thousand BC, Mexicans excavated the Valle de Tuhac. Mm-hmm. And hybridized grasses to create the corn plant. It was pretty cool. Whoa. I know, right? Whoa. So indigenous cultures viewed corn as the foundation of humanity or the seed of life. Um, and so much so that they believed people were built from corn. Okay. I'm not following them there, but I do agree <laughs> that corn seed is of life. A, a foundation in a seed of life because uh have you looked at America? <laughs> Everything is made of corn. Yes. Every we fucking corn. thing has corn in it. Corn syrup. Or just corn. Corn. Corn mill. Hell, they're even trying to put corn in our in our gas tanks, if I recall. Corn, man. Yeah. Corn everywhere. Corn all over the place. Thanks, Nebraska. Yeah, thanks, Nebraska. <laughs> You're crushing it. Crushing it. So the corn cu- the corn kernels are nixmalized with an alkaline treatment to remove the husk. Okay. Um, and they are ground into a fine corn flour base. Yep, yep, yep. Right? Um, that's what Tim was talking about, putting it together and then mm-hmm. smashing it together. Um, so historians date the first traces of that corn back to Olmec culture. We can pretty much assume that cornbread and like the idea of like f- the corn flatbread was a heavy part of their diet. Um, yeah. That, yeah. Right. That, I didn't even think about that. No, I know. Right. And then that nixmization, like that process, it developed during the Olmec times and it was like roughly 2000 years ago. Wow. So like the, pr- yeah, the process of getting corn together has been around. Cornbread, 2000 years old, huh? Fucking wild. Wow. But it makes sense though. It's so fucking good. It's like, it's had so many years to just yeah get perfected. Wow. And it's like tried thought, and true. Who would have thought that tacos would have been tacos, tortillas, and, and cornbread. cornbread in one? No. Yeah. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not here, not now, not never. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> no way, no how. Fucking love it. Who put that chair there? <laughs> not my chair. Not my chair. Not my chair, not my problem. That's what I say. <laughs> so this process, it was adopted and continued by other pre-Columbian peoples. Um, so think about like central and southern Mexico. So this is where it gets fun. So we've got the Teotihuacan, the Toltec, the Zapotec, and oh, you may have heard of them, the Aztecs. Yeah. Yeah, these fucking empires. Even the Mayans developed their own method of maize preparation. Yeah. Like they fucking love that shit. Me too. Right? So said that Montezuma used the tortilla as a spoon mm-hmm. to hold the food, which was prepared on hot stones and decorated with a cochineal, beans, and chili. Mm. Mm. And so it worked out because women used to send send their men who worked in the fields. They would just wrap the food up and they could still eat it later. I mean, it would be wrapped and it wouldn't be a problem. And it's like it probably, I mean, I imagine their ingredients, like things weren't probably getting soggy, soggy in that aspect. Like the way right. we load stuff up with, the salsas and the tom- tomatillas and the whatever. Yeah. And honestly, even if it does get a little soggy, that's fine. Hell, you still got food out in the fields, bro. That's all that matters. Again, tamales are like the definition of... So fucking good. Yeah. Just of like soft corn. Grab and go. Tortilla. Yeah. It's mm, great. So and, good. Yeah. Yeah. So years later, Hernan Cortez overthrew the Aztec Empire, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he fed his shoulder... His soldiers. He fed his shoulder, soldiers... He fed his, his shoulders. shoulders. <laughs> he clearly didn't do my exercises yeah, before this. <laughs> um, banquets of corn, tortillas, and pork. So they were going ham. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking ham. Gotcha. Um, so They were going ham <laughs> on that pork. I see you. Um, so years later, after Hernan Cortez overthrew the Aztec Empire, so then the Spanish invaded Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm. imperialism Mm -hmm. and corn was actually seen as being associated with native deities but wheat was associated with the christian eucharist 
So during this time, native food was seen as being lower class compared to European food. Good, brother. Right? I'll take that lower class shit all day. Like, what? So per Chef Aron Sanchez, you guys might might know, be like familiar with him if you watch Food Network and a few other like cooking shows. Like he's out and yeah. about. Um, he does stuff. He does it. So because of this and the way different ingredients are native to different parts of Mexico, this is pretty much why tacos are prepared in so many different ways. Oh, which okay. Makes, yeah, okay, 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 okay. So native food was looked down upon, and the Europeans believed that the food wasn't associated with the natives who were still alive, but rather the glories of the Aztecs. This is where the whole cognitive dissidence thing, I'm just like, what the fuck? So people who were of European ancestry claimed that they were the descendants of the Aztec emperors and not like the lower class natives that were actually there are you fucking i'm not serious yeah no i'm fucking serious I, okay obviously obviously this is gonna like what the fuck you guys um unfortunately this provided political legitimacy for europeans and it shaped classism related to food i hate this planet I, sometimes like this place pisses me off sometimes like that's what, like cognitive did like that shit started early my dude early early we were trying to like humans suck like we were trying to justify yeah we had no verbiage around that shit but that's, that's what, what that, that was 100 and like gaslit the fuck out of them so yeah. we're gonna kind of fast forward a lot Please. A lot, a lot, I'm a lot. I'm tired of talking about this. We're de- like, we're <laughs> fuck we're, those guys. <laughs> we're like kind of going towards like modern century right here. So this is kind of we're going to the United States. So this is kind of where the modern taco and like kind of what we know of tacos and yeah, the cuisine around it. This is kind of where all of this is shaping immigration. Hello. Immigration to America in the turbulent years of the late... Ni- Look at me and my big words. What the fuck? <laughs> the late 19th and early 20th centuries led to a bunch of Mexican migrants coming over to California and Texas. Yeah. Um. So, of course, with that and, and migration, they brought a lot of their local specialties with them. Wait. So... Are you spinning that migration is good sometimes? You know what? Immigrants actually add culture to a place. Tim, did I just say that? Damn. Interesting. Damn. That's weird. Let's open the borders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Funny how that worked out. So, I mean, pretty much like this right here is like where the essence of street food is being born. So you had yeah, you had these vendors popping up in places like San Antonio yeah, and buddy. Los Angeles. That's how they make money, man. That's how they made that money, honey. The Mexican migrants initially brought tacos to America when they first came to work on the railroad construction in the southern states. In the early 1900s, the Mexican taco carts lined L.A. with the women running them called the Chili Queens. Yes. Boom. So these women were out here slanging tacos, helping our guys out on the railroad, helping our people out in the streets. Just, hey, honey, you want some food? Hey, let me get you some tacos. Women are the reason we all eat tacos. Heard. 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 Sounds so, good, buddy. And this is the wild thing about it. So Immigration and women. Are the <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, Turning Point USA just yeah. got to put a target on your back. No, yeah, um, yeah, they're pissed. <laughs> they are pissed. Prager U is fucking. They're about to do a YouTube series on you. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, at the time, most Americans considered toxic talk. Tacos are lower. Most Americans are considered toxic. Uh, I'm going to try that again. At the time, most Americans considered tacos a lower class street food. Good. Dude. So the American taco ingredients. That's how you know I'm going to be broke for the rest what? of my life. Is because like anytime we mention like low class foods, like, I'm like, yeah, yes, buddy, let's, let's, fuck fucking, it, let's fuck that shit up. It's good. I will take a fucking two dollar and 50 cent fucking fucking street taco any day day of of the week week. absolutely any day of the week any day of the week and it's gonna hit oh i love every time trust me i love duck confit but i will fucking devour some carne asada on the fucking Mm. side of the road with a bus passing me all day long oh my gosh it's all day long you know it's gonna be fucking good dude unfortunately 
The American taco ingredients were quite different from the Mexican versions, um, as taqueros had to work with the ones only available to them locally. So these chili queens, they all pretty much like had their own stands. They had their own way of making their tacos. So if like you, if you like shoddy over there in the corner and the way she made her tacos, you weren't going to be able to get that at the other one on the corner. Like, right. Like makes sense. These are like tried and true one of one. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty true if you go to any place that has like a lot of taco places mm, yeah that's fair you know what i mean they all don't taste the same carne asada will taste different wherever you you're go in absolutely Austin, right Texas. there isn't a place that makes the same carne asada you're it's absolutely just right. always different every time you go not wild yeah um while most of these chili queens i'm hungry dude i'm me too no i want some tacos man <laughs> um so most of them were known for their chili con carne and tamales more so than the corn tortillas that accompanied them eventually the taco became the number one go-to. The idea that, also a part of this too, because this is such an American thing that we, the idea, especially back in the day, the Mexican cuisine gained a reputation for danger and exoticism, and because of the chili queens, romance. Oh my God. Amer- I swear to God. I, dude. And then like, but it makes sense because that is something that we would do. This is borderline worse than when we like considered pretzels too foreign. <laughs> Fuck you, LA Times. <laughs> when, when we were like, pretzels are German. <laughs> like, Tim, it was a different time. It I was can, war time. I can literally see Tucker Carlson being on, <laughs> oh, the, on, on cable War time USA right now. Being like, tacos selling sex to <laughs> your kids. Like, and just because he's Absolutely. like, just because he's feverishly These masturbating women- to like, tacos in his fucking private time so he has to project his fears onto the fucking american uh-huh. public jesus fucking christ i could see it too actually it's kind of romance because they were exotic. exotic shut the fuck up <laughs> just go eat a taco you fucking mayonnaise guzzling bitch just, just fucking so, call it. so yeah okay <laughs> that's sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's chili queens no so and like Again, kind of talking about like this this great migration that came to Mexico City with all these people coming with all of their foods and how they how they made them and how it was differentiated from you know the areas that they came from the regions that they came from and the local ingredients to those regions. Yeah, Me- Mexico City just became a mecca of food. Yeah, man. And it and thankfully because of that that made its way up to North America and we're very thankful for that. Frankly, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So it was said in 1905 that the first mention of tacos was actually in a newspaper tracked apparently like with the time of the Mexican immigrants that were coming up to help with the railroad tracks. I'm pretty sure the movie Zorro was about this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Get I, Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> and then during the 1930s and the 1960s, there was a massive Lebanese migration to Mexico. So as Mexicans tried the tried the foods of the foreign culture and began to recreate some of their favorite foreign dishes. There you go, Tim. Mexicans made al pastor as a shawarma or a Euro recreation with a necessary protein and marination adjustment due to the ingredient availability. This is the game change because this is what changed the way tacos and the meat for tacos was prepared. Going back to your point, it happened because people from up were coming over and taking things from their culture being like, oh, you guys like this? And they're integrating that with the cuisine from both. And it's just incredible from both countries. And this is what we came from it. Yeah. So in the 1950s. <laughs> that store is really good. Oh, so good. Um, There's an economic crisis and a shortage of jobs. The residents of San Vicente. When? Sorry. Is in the 1950s. Okay. Yeah. In San Vicente and Telexacala begin selling taco baskets. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Taco baskets. Oh, this like keeps happening. Okay. So, in fact, the site became the capital of the basket queue where dozens of taco makers and with their bicycles would go and sell tacos. So, they would like just wrap up all their tacos in their little basket and just head on down the city and Wow. They would just try and sell their tacos. Like talk about street vendors. Right. Yeah. That's a lot like the um, uh, the hokey pokies mm-hmm. for and the uh, ice cream. Exactly. And then yeah. to your point on the flip side of that, people would get in vans and they would just pack their shit up and they would go to like these rural, super rural areas and they would just 
sell them food. Yeah. Which is great because then you're just expanding your cuisine to these places that you wouldn't normally even get a chance to get introduced to them. Yeah. So that was the 1950s. Let's do that. <laughs> right. That's a, that sounds like a fucking great time, my guy. Yeah, it does, not it? Yeah, we can trick out a van. Yeah. So this is the 1950s. Let's go to 1960. This is where it starts to get interesting. Bing. You hear that bell? So, in 1962, Glenn Bell opened the first Taco Bell. We're talking about Taco Bell, guys. We're talking about Taco Bell right now. It's <laughs> based on the first few locations that were opened. Glenn Bell wasn't selling Taco Bell in Me- Mexican and Spanish uh, neighborhoods. He was out there in California not selling Taco Bell to them. No, why would he? So, just take that for what you will. Also, what this meant that those who didn't live in what was considered lower class neighborhoods, it didn't really give them a, a chance to sample their culturally relevant foods right i and mean taco like, bell is about as far as you get from it i feel like right like what the fuck guys this guy again tim you hinted at it is essentially why we have the hard shell taco he's the one that makes this hard shell taco that forms the u and the reason why i mean like granted it wasn't popular because of glenn bell but he definitely is the one that helped expedite the popularity of them people liked it because it would keep longer yeah right again right. the commodification of so it kept longer so they could put it in fast food and say quote unquote fast food. Um, yeah. But like carry out restaurants and it'd be yeah. easier. Right. Um, which kind of sucks, but that's of course how that shit happens. So yeah, we talk about that all the time. It's just like anytime that you try to just like, I don't know, you're over consuming something. So exactly. it's like, how can we make something way, 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 way easy because too many people need this and we can't make it from scratch every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's, I mean, and that's yeah. exactly where it comes from. So yeah, that's pretty much how Taco Bell came about. Right. Early ni- 1962. So it's not even, not been around for that long. And now it's 7,427 locations. Hey man. Over ta- 31 countries. Listen, Taco Bell is not Mexican food and it's definitely not tacos, but it's smack do. <laughs> it is sm- <laughs> I want that on you a t-shirt. You do smack do. It's smack do. We're putting that on a t-shirt. You okay I fuck with Taco Bell for real, though. Absolutely. I really do. Dude, matter bring fact, back the pizza. Matter of fact, fuck you guys. Bring I back just, the pizza. You know, we put down this old fashioned. I'm a little tipsy. I smack do. We smack do. We're going to go get some Taco Bell, yo. Um, Fucking A. Honestly, man. though, like bringing it back to 2022, I mean, you have so many different types of tacos. You've got Al Pastor, your Carnitas, Longandina, Conchonisa, Barbacoa, Barilla. Oh, so good. Um, carne is so good. So carne good. Asada is so good. So good. Chicken, chili, you know, Chorizo cheese. Chorizo and egg. So good. Avocado, God. beans, grasshoppers, depending on where you're at in the world. Hey, man, I fuck with that. Chili yeah, lime. Yeah, it's extra pretty. Chili pursuit. lime, grasshopper, fucking. Okay, send that to Tim. I'll just take taco. the regular ones. I'm good. I'm just saying, man. Beef. I mean, there's just so many different type of tacos. Crickets. I'm just saying bugs are the future protein. At this rate, it's where I left. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe let's change it up a little bit before we fucking kill off all the fucking animals. Let's see. I'm not going to get on my horse tonight. That's bait. I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. Move on. So we've got... <laughs> <laughs> The water. No, that's, okay. That's bait, baby. So, I, yeah. I already ruined last episode. We're good. <laughs> no, you're good, man. Okay, so Tim, that was taco time. You've arrived oh, at taco time. Yes. I know. I knew we were getting there because you said 2022, and I was like, we're barely in 2022. We're barely 22. <laughs> yeah, no, it's tacos are a long standing food. Let me ask you, what's your favorite taco joint in Tennessee? In Middle Tennessee? Oh, fuck, dude. Um, man. Oh, fuck. Uh, I got mine right. I'm ready. I'm locked and loaded. I've got the two. Okay, pick them. Uh, Mas Tacos, Por Favor, solid. Um, and then the yep, other yep, one, yep. Um, I, fuck, I've got three. I've got the Bar Taco. Yep, 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 yep. And then, man, I don't remember what taco truck it was, but it used to be at the taco truck across the parking lot from our work. Uh, Los Tequira. Uh, I got, mm, man. Los Tequiras. Los Tequiras. Solid. Los solid taco shit. Truck fucking fire yeah truck. You, so good y'all dude. know if you're in tennessee and you've seen that truck you know what we're talking about um old blue truck yeah those Mas, are moss taco is is the taco place so it's if anyone authentic as if, fuck. i mean yeah, yeah. If anyone again i don't know i don't like to pull the like yes i do pull I lived, it i lived in austin um like <laughs> tacos are my thing um <laughs> so like when people ask me you know oh yeah what's the taco spot right. in tennessee Mas taco. Hell yeah. Mas taco. Dude, though, I'm t- you walk in, they got the ATM. They don't take card. They don't only take-, take fucking cash. They got the cantina next door. It's in a fucking house. The place is kind of falling apart. It's fucking amazing. So like, good, dude. They change the special every fucking week. They double tortilla it up. That place is fucking phenomenal. So good. The elote it, there is like 
Bar Taco, great, over expensive, and they're selling yes. you an experience. Yes. Moss Taco, house marks authentic. So good. so good, dude. Authentic. That place is where it's fucking at. Agreed. So if anyone ever asked me, like, what taco joint are you going to in Nashville? Moss Taco is poor hands favor. Hands down, Moss Taco is poor favor. That place is fucking so good, awesome. dude. Their avocado tacos out of this fucking world. Oh, yeah. Oh, my like, gosh, man. I th- Those guys are doing it. Those guys are doing it, and they're doing it right. 100 percent. absolutely that, that's, that's definitely worth the trip over there for sure that is the fucking joint right there because that place reminds me the most of of austin tacos i feel like that's a pretty yeah that's a pretty high yeah and austin tacos are just where it's at stamp of approval yeah man absolutely i've had the look i have the opportunity to at least go there and experience the food there my man second location yeah is torchies torchies um, so torchies torchies also is in austin and I think Torchies does a really good job at being a very accessible taco joint, but it's really good. Okay. As opposed to like San Antonio Taco Company. I'm oh, not a big fan yeah, of them. Yeah. Um, wah, wah. I mean, you know, you can enjoy them. That's fine. They definitely have their, their thing. Their thing. Um, but I prefer like for a company that is in more than one location, I prefer Torchies uh, as far as like you're going to get a quality taco. They're a little bit, their price range is a little bit high for me personally, but yeah. I understand because they are a franchise. They're right, offering sure. that sort of thing. But yeah, for sure. If you're in Nashville, must talk support before. Fantastic. I appreciate Okay, yeah. Safe for approval, ten. yeah. Fan fucking tap. <laughs> Might need to make the move over there. Yeah. Very soon. Fan uh, Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about <laughs> a lot of the, the places I haven't been in, okay. a, minute, in a hot minute. Yeah, um, no, okay. Sunflower Cafe is one of them. I'm just, yeah. I'm 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 Jones in for some Nashville fucking grub. Um, yes, but yeah, that was tacos, man. That was tacos, um, dude. So tell me, I mean, we tacos is perfect food. I don't even know why we're acting like I'm not going to go all the all way right, up. Hell yeah, uh, it's a perfect food. We dinged it. That's the second one. Second Bing. perfect food for Tim. Um, there it's are, worth it. I mean, come on, dude, you can't go wrong. Like you can't go wrong. With tacos, tacos are so good. My favorite, favorite, favorite fucking thing uh, are the women in this story. Chili queens. The chili Yo. queens, man. Completely. It's, changed chili the cuisine are, game oh my god dude they're great mm-hmm. they're great and I, I love that I, that was my favorite part of the history absolutely was the chili queens just like doing their thing Crushing they were using it. ingredients around them they were fucking making the dish popular they were just they were crushing it it made me so happy that they're clearly still around yeah dude i love that i love shit. that yeah, absolutely yeah. like not by name but by 100 percent. like the, that's the women yeah. of those families man they fucking crush it mm-hmm, dude mm-hmm. they are making their cuisine and a shout out to mexico city because it's like shout out to a- mexico Oh uh, yeah, right. Shout this is where all Mexico, this cuisine is man. coming from, and it's just like the fact that again, mostly women just came yeah. from different parts, and we're like, "Hey guys, let's fucking make this a culinary capital," and that clearly yeah, is man. what they've done. I mean, yes. if the fucking UN was like, "Hey, tacos are really important yeah. to food and like history of the world," and uh, I think uh, that's that's a pretty high honor. Oh, can I tell you that to- a Mexican restaurant is one of my favorite <laughs> experiences in the world? Is there a specific reason why? I mean, there's so many, but I'm curious to know what yours would be. If you go to a really good one, yeah. not only is the food just out of this world, but like, it's just so fun. <laughs> I agree with that. It's, it's, it's great music. It's bright yeah. colors. It's it's bright lights. It's just... It's a good I, time. That is such an experience for me. I get the, at, there's, I get, it's at a point where it's borderline nostalgic because, again, you grow up in Texas, you get a lot of like Tex-Mex influence. You get a lot of sure. that... that culture influence and yeah i'm in i, I truly am in love with it oh I, man i, I like I that adore adore it so i love i love cooking mexican food it's such a family mm-hmm. thing i mean i it's that's where a lot of these recipes come from it comes from like family mm-hmm. like it comes from this this idea of of like we have what we have let's make a dish that can yeah. feed us type thing it's just it's just wonderful it really Absolutely. is it's it's a beautiful beautiful thing and i think so much of mexican food uh that's why it's so good because it Absolutely. reflects that it does i, I, I mean yeah you, i think that's a very fair assessment it, of that 100 percent. like you just as you're eating it you just feel you feel that 100 mm-hmm. especially when you get like good Mexican food, you feel that. You feel the 
you feel the passion behind that. I think that's a good point. Yeah. There, there's definitely a very happy and positive association with Mexican food. It's yeah. like if someone's like, hey, do you want to go get some Mexican food? It's like, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Especially man. now that, you know, we're older and we yeah. can actually legally drink. It's like, yeah, I'm about to yeah. get a let's bar. Get some let's get some chips. Let's get like a Dos Equis or like, something. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, a, a good cerveza. Let's, yeah. let's have a good little time. Chat, relax. Like, maybe so catch good. a game. And yeah. I mean, like, you know, I don't think I would get broken up at a Mexican restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, I you take me to steakhouse. I might be getting broken up with out yeah, there. I don't know, man. Like I'm, but like Mexican food. I know we're about to have a good time. I know. I'm like we're about to have I'm a like great borderline emotional right now I, because no, I like it. I don't because it really it's so close to me. Like emotionally, I fucking that makes sense, man. Love. I love Mexican food. I love Mexican restaurants. I love taco. I, it's just that cuisine is great, man. I love that tacos deserve to be a perfect food. Hell yeah! Um, I'm so that go makes me so happy. Fucking get some good tacos, man. Yes. Listen and get a little drunk. Hit up that double Listen, bell. Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> they slapped you. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt, Tim. I want that on a t-shirt. Listen, it's Monday. Uh, go make plans with your homies this weekend. Yeah. To go get some tacos. Go get some marks. Have a good time. Yeah. Kick back. Yeah. Relax. It's uh. Yeah. It's it's a good time. Um. Cause that's. Where does food, That's man? It. That's Welcome it, man. to the end of the podcast. Uh, you're here. It's 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 after hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, guys, you can find us. You can uh, locate us. You can echolocate us if you feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> it is an audio platform, Batman. so it wouldn't be too hard. <laughs> no, you can find us. We are on Spotify. We're on Apple. We're on Castbox. We're on uh, other things i'm trying to think of other ones we're out, we're out there we're on we're, anchor. Uh, yeah we're on anchor we're, yeah we're on we're out there um we out here <laughs> we out there guys you can check us out there uh we mentioned anchor anchor.fm forward slash where does does that's food that's kind of home base man you can uh subscribe to us you can support us um goes a long way if you support us yes you get ad free episodes Oof. and clutch and one to two free bonus episodes. I'm not going to say free, but like, you know, you get bonus episodes. Because technically, you are supporting us. And so, you know, we take that we take that to heart. And the bonus episodes, they range from cocktail episodes, beer episodes, top five episodes. You know, we got stuff working. All right? We, we take this stuff seriously. We're very passionate about it for no fucking reason at all. No food. It is borderline stressful at this point but we, <laughs> no but we, uh yeah if you subscribe we really do try and uh bring our all to both things you know we want our main cast to be awesome and at times reflective and we do the same thing with the bonus you know we don't want to half ass it and and you know just sit there and have like fireside chats you know we, <laughs> we do try and still bring a level of research um and every once in a while, I'll sprinkle in a uh, a top five thing. Just Absolutely. Because, you know, you get to know us a little bit more. So, guys, go check that out. It's anchor.fm forward slash where does does just food. Also, you can check us out at where does food dot com. Hey, yo. Yeah, we have a website. You can uh, cool. you can read the quick little blurb that uh, <laughs> describes how Elle and I met. And, uh, you know, it does a real quick summary of just why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably wondering sure i get asked all the time like why food uh it's pretty simple go read that uh (laughs) guys you can check us out on twitter we're at where does food that is the main page but if you want to follow us individually you can check us or you can check me out at at tim we hunt you can check l out at l chapo three underscores l three underscores chapo chapo one p not two p's (laughs) (laughs) I believe that's the end of the podcast. And I you think hit that's all the shout outs. The music's still playing, but it's about to round out. Wrap Here, it up. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap music. it up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you guys uh, have a good one. Thank you.